Do you get stuck balancing difficult combustion reactions? I'm Leia Fish from LeahFirstSci.com, where you can find hundreds of study tips and tutorial videos. I also offer private online tutoring for chemistry as well as organic chemistry, biology, and physics. In this video, I will teach you how to balance both simple and complex combustion reactions. You can think of a combustion reaction as a burning reaction, and it follows a very standard formula. You start out with a molecule that has some number of carbon, we'll call it X, has some number of hydrogen, and we'll call that Y. We can even have some number of oxygen, let's call that Z, but we don't know how many. And the way you balance the reaction will vary depending on the molecule you start with. However, they all react in the same way. They will all react with O2, or oxygen gas, to produce two products, carbon dioxide and water. Anytime you recognize a reaction that starts out in this format, you can predict the product and then balance it the way I showed you in the first stoichiometry video. But let's dig a little deeper into this when you have a simple combustion or a complex combustion reaction to balance. So you come across a problem that looks like this. Given CH3OH and reacts with O2 gas, complete the reaction. The first thing you want to recognize is that this molecule is written in a way that is not ideal for balancing. CH3OH is methanol or wood alcohol, but in order to balance this properly, you want to group similar atoms. So I will rewrite this as CH4O, and that's because the H and the H3 gives me H4. Now I'll have a much easier time seeing how many hydrogens I have. And watch how this fits into the formula of CX, HY, and OZ. My CX is 1, my HY is 4, and OZ is once again 1. I automatically recognize this to be a combustion reaction and fill in the products of CO2 plus H2O. But I won't start placing coefficients haphazardly because I might get confused. Instead, I'll make a quick column going down the center to see how many I have and then balance accordingly. On the left, I have one carbon in methanol and on the right, I have a carbon in carbon dioxide. On the left, I have four hydrogens in methanol and two hydrogens on the right in water. On the left, I have three oxygen, so be careful that you don't miss them in the two molecules. And on the right, I also have three oxygen. At first glance, the molecule appears to be almost properly balanced except for the hydrogen. To balance the hydrogen, I place a two in front of the water. This gives me two times two for a total of four hydrogen, but it also changes my oxygen count. I now have two oxygens in carbon dioxide and two oxygens in the water because I have two times one is two. That gives me a total of four. I now have carbons and hydrogens balanced, but not oxygen. Now here's the problem. The problem is that oxygen comes as a pair, and if I change the oxygen number, I will add two instead of one. Then how can I balance something where I have an even number on the one side, an odd number on the other side, and all I want to do is add one? This is a phenomenon that you'll see happen quite a few times, and the trick here Instead of using fractions, which I personally find to be more confusing than helpful, the trick here is to just double everything. When you double everything, then you're doubling that odd factor, and you'll be able to balance it a lot easier. So I'll place parentheses around the entire reaction, place it too, but this too has risk for confusion because that two might be forgotten. So instead, let's distribute that two on everything except for oxygen, and this way we'll know what number to fill in for oxygen. So we'll start by doubling the methanol, doubling the carbon dioxide, and then doubling the water. Let's update everything accordingly. Two methanols means I have two carbons on the left, two carbon dioxide gives me two carbons on the right. Doubling the hydrogen I have, let's actually place the number up here, that means I have two H4 for a total of eight. And the oxygens I will ignore for now, I want that to be the last thing I balance. On the right, I have two carbons, which we already wrote. I have four times two, which is eight hydrogens. And now let's see what we have for oxygen on the right. Four waters, that gives me four oxygen. Two carbon dioxide gives me another four oxygen for a total of eight. Now let's see how we can find eight oxygens on the left side. We'll start off by crossing out the three. We have two oxygens in methanol, so let's do some uh, quick calculations here. We need a total of eight. 
we have two in methanol that means we need another six in order to get six out of this O2 we simply divided by two and place a three in the front let's get rid of this and now I have a balanced reaction 2 methanol plus 3O2 yields 2 CO2 plus 4 H2O and the trick here was to take it slowly one atom at a time and when you recognize that odd even discrepancy double everything so that the odd becomes even and then figure out how many oxygens to place in let's verify we have two oxygens here plus three times two which is six for a total of eight and that means i have two carbons on both sides eight hydrogens on both sides eight oxygens on both sides and this molecule is completely balanced let's try one more combustion reaction this time we'll look at the burning of ethane which is c2h6 plus o2 once again, if you're asked to complete this reaction, recognize that a molecule that starts with carbon and hydrogen reacting with oxygen is a combustion reaction, and that will yield CO2 plus H2O. First thing to do for balancing is write down your atoms down the center so you can keep track of what's going on without messing up the actual equation. We have two carbons on the left and one carbon on the right. We have six hydrogens on the left and two on the right. We have two oxygens on the left and three on the right. Don't forget we have oxygen in both carbon dioxide and water, and you have to keep counting both of them. This is a very common mistake, and that's why I'm harping on it. The first thing that I see not balanced is carbon, so I place a two in front of the carbon dioxide. This allows me to update two carbons on the right, but I also update the oxygen. I have two times two, which is four oxygen, and here I have one for a total of five. The next thing that's not balanced is the hydrogen. On the right, I have only two, but since I have six on the left, I place a three in front of the H2O. This gives me three times two, which is six, so I have six hydrogens on the right, but I also have an update on the oxygen. I now have three from water and four from carbon dioxide for a total of seven. Carbon is balanced, hydrogen is balanced, but once again we're faced with that phenomenon where we have an odd number of oxygen on one side and an even number on the other side, and the only thing possible appears to be using a fraction. Again, try to avoid fractions because they get confusing. Instead, we'll multiply the entire reaction by two except for oxygen, and then find a better number to use. Placing a two in front of ethane, the two for carbon dioxide becomes a four, and the three in front of water becomes a six. Now let's update all the atoms accordingly. We have two times C2, which gives me four carbons on the left. I have two times H6 for 12 hydrogens, and I'm ignoring the oxygen on the left for now. On the product side, I have four times one for carbon, which gives me four, and I have four times two for oxygen, giving me eight. For water, I have six times two, gives me 12 hydrogens, and I have six times one, which gives me six oxygens. The total oxygens on the right is eight and six for a number of 14. And now it's very easy. Since oxygen shows up only as O2 gas and not in any other molecule on the reactant side, I simply take the number of oxygen that I need, which is 14, divided by two because I have two oxygens in every molecule, and place a seven in the front. This gives me seven times two, for a total of 14, and I have four carbons on both sides, 12 hydrogen, and 14 oxygen. In the next video, I'm going to show you a trick for balancing acid-base reactions. So what do you think? Do you feel confident enough to conquer these chemistry topics on your own? Thing is, this short video was just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more to understand in chemistry which cannot be taught in just 5 to 10 minutes. But luckily, I have prepared an exclusive video training that I am offering as a free gift to you. Trust me, if you're serious about chemistry, you can't miss this one. To claim your free gift, visit layerforsci.com slash chemistry gift. As a subscriber, you will receive exclusive email updates, including information regarding new videos, study tips, resources, and more. The URL again, layerforsci.com slash chemistry gift, all one word. A quick favor, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up. If you know anyone else struggling with this information, share it with them too. They'll thank you for it. I'd love to hear from you, so please leave a comment below and let me know what you liked most about this video and, of course, if you have any questions. 
You can also say hi on Facebook by visiting me at facebook.com slash Versailles. Psst, still here. Don't forget to subscribe.